Okay. Um, talk, talk to me about coming home. You, you mentioned something that just blew me away. You said you guys aren't able to speak. It's looked down on to speak mm -hmm. to psychologists, to even speak to each other, um, mm -hmm. to show remorse. I got to imagine that when you guys come home, you're suffering from depression, suicidal thoughts, oh, yeah. uh, you're experiencing extreme aggression and anger, probably taking mm -hmm. it out on the ones closest to you. Mm -hmm. What is that process like for you guys? And, and do many guys at that point still hold to the fact that I can't talk to anybody about, about this? Or yeah. once yeah. you're back home and you're a civilian, is, is it okay? Mm -hmm. once, once, once we got back home, it was, uh, like you said, we lived through that those roller coasters of emotions and we all go through them um but still like no one no one talks to anyone you still can't talk to anyone what kept us i guess sane were was the fact that we were so busy you know we worked for six months continuously five months continuously and you only allotted 14 days off that entire training cycle um being away all the time and keeping us busy i think is what kept most of the same just simply because we were busy um we didn't have too much downtime but i've seen during my time in two three guys you know kill themselves and uh and, and these are guys you knew? these are guys oh you yeah knew? one guy yeah i went through ranger school with and he blew his head off uh with a shotgun in his bathroom few weeks after we got back from ranger school and that was ranger school it wasn't even combat that was just ranger school um yeah it, it was a lot of guys drank too like i'm gonna say a lot it was like a hundred percent of the guys drank there was one guy who i know didn't uh, he was a mormon or something but he never drank uh, everybody else drank and that's the other factor key factor one of the things that kept us sane we thought was keeping us sane but it was just being intoxicated to the point, you know, it it put some of those bad memories at bay. But then you can only get drunk for so long before the violent side comes out. So you had to find that it was always it was a fight somewhere. You had to control that balance of how much can I drink before I black out and go violent mode? And how much can I drink to where I don't feel anymore? And where you don't feel anymore was like the perfect state of being. And that's where a lot of the guys, you know, live life while not in combat, of just being numb. How do you maintain a relationship like that? Because you're literally drinking mm -hmm. so that you don't feel anymore. Mm -hmm. But that's got to apply to your, your significant other. Like, oh, it, yeah. it's not just not feeling what I did over there. I just don't feel. How, how does yeah. anybody maintain a relationship? They don't. We had a 98% divorce rate in our unit. Um, it was the highest divorce rate in all the Army. And we only made up, there was only 2,005 of us total, but we made up more uh, the, for the most divorce, the highest divorce rate um, for the entire U.S. United States Army. And that's hundreds of, the, hundreds of thousands of individuals, but 2,500 dudes, we had a 98 point something 99 percent divorce, divorce rate it was a almost a guarantee you were going to get a divorce within that first year first two years two years was a that's a big deal but that first year when she's with that ranger and she experiences that first deployment they never it never lasted damn damn okay it, let, let's talk you specifically how bad did your drinking get Mm -hmm. Um, and, and how, how, how did you get to a point of getting it under control if you were ever able to get it under control? Yeah, it was about as bad as you could get, um, drinking wise. I was, yeah, drinking from the time I got off work to the time I got home, sometimes at work, uh, like ridiculous amounts of Jack Daniels and, and, and cases of beer. Um, that's how I functioned. Like I would do. PT that way. I would work out that way. I just became a functioning alcoholic. Really good one. Um, I thought I was really good at it, but 
it never got under control until literally I was way out the army now. I was 2015 and I had my son. Uh, I was the like the the saving grace, I would say, as far as, you know, not being a angry, intoxicated individual. Cause that's what I was. I was I was angry all the time. If I wasn't drinking, I was, you know, no, I was never a time I was not drinking. When I first started to quit, um, like it was real bad. The withdrawals and the shaking and vomiting and like it was, it was you look up the what happens, it, it it got bad. You lose control of certain bodily functions, it seems like at certain points. It was really bad. I almost had to get checked into a, a hospital. They wanted me to get checked into a hospital. Um, but I'm just, I didn't want to. So I took care of it on my own at home and just sucked it up. It's like, I've been through worse and just stop, you know? And that first like few months was real, really, really, really hard, really hard. You, you, but the you, whole, go what's ahead. that? No, I was just no, saying the, the, the withdrawals are, that was like, a, that was a real thing. My wife was, her, my, my wife was worried. My parents were worried about it. You know, it was a, it was bad alcohol withdrawal of just suddenly stopping. You know, do do you come to a point where you even recognize yourself anymore? Like you, you're drinking okay. all the time. I got to believe you're angry. You're adjusting to civilian life over there. You celebrated mm -hmm. for, for violence. Yeah. But yeah. Over here. You you can damn near uh, uh, scream at somebody and get locked up for it. They're calling right. you aggressive. Uh -huh. Like, do do you even recognize yourself because you're caught between two polar opposite worlds? Yeah, I don't recognize the old me now, um, but back then that's how I viewed myself of just being. Being that way, just it's what I believed I was built to do, you know, um, it's who I was. But now I look back at the old me and I don't recognize that guy. I, I do it often of I'll pass by a picture in the home or my wife will pull up an old photo of us. And I'm look. I don't I don't know that guy. Like, I look at myself like that now of like, I see what that guy's going through. I see the pain and everything else that. He's hiding, but I don't, I don't, I don't recognize that person. That was an angry, scary dude. I, I know that. I look at my old self like that, the younger me. Of, that was a weird, scary guy. That was just a scary guy. Yeah. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, Feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.